welcome to this special city council meeting. Just to remind you, there are no cell phones or electronic equipment allowed except as authorized by state law 551.023. If everyone will take just a moment, let's stand for the pledges. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Okay, and I call this meeting to order. We have a quorum this evening with only council member Stokes absent due to family reasons. City Secretary, proof of notice. Thank you, Mayor. The notice of this meeting was posted by 4 p.m. on Thursday, November 9th. Okay, great, thank you. Any public comments this evening? No, we have none. Okay, great. No presentations, recognitions, or proclamations. I have a quick city mayor report just to update everybody. Um, thank you, first of all, Council, for coming to this special meeting. I appreciate it. It was a special called meeting in regards to the AISD child care donation. Thank you. And also, I want to thank Council for all your attendance and your comments. Uh, if you're absent, a lot of you Zoom in. Thank you for doing that. Uh, Council Member Stokes, as I said, is away. Her granddaughter's getting initiated into the National Honor Society, which is a big deal. She did provide a statement for me to read on her behalf, which I'll read during the discussion. Alpine's on the cusp of great things. I'm hearing it in all the meetings I'm going to. There's a lot of things coming down the line, and it's really exciting. 2024 is going to be a great year. The meetings from Alpine Community Projects with working on long-term assisted living care or a nursing home is, is gonna be phenomenal. Uh, meetings with JD Newsom from the hospital district, Big, big Ben Regional Medical Center. I'm telling you 2024 is gonna be big. And then of course, Soil Ross and AISD. Also, I wanted to make you aware, our next workshop will be at our next meeting on December 5th at 4.30 and it's in regards to water. Water of course is important to us as we know why and where we live. And there is a water in the desert conference coming up. If you are able to attend even a portion of it, I encourage you to do so because they're gonna have experts on water and aquifers and talking about us specifically, which I think is gonna be important for us to know what the experts think in regards to water and then landowners, community members, uh, policy makers. So I'll be in one of the sessions. Anyway, everybody with an interest in water in the desert and what's going on in our own area. And since I'm doing a little, a little portion of that, I have a Zoom meeting on Friday with Dr. Warnock going over what we're gonna discuss at that conference. They're gonna come to our water workshop too, the experts in water on December 5th to help participate in that workshop and then also probably the wastewater one too as a favor for that. All right so those sessions by the way they pretty much run all day so I know you can't attend all day everybody's busy but if you can come to any of them please do when they put out the agenda and so that's Thursday January 18th 2024 it'll be at Sol Ross State University and that's it for me so let's move on no attorney report, manager report, city staff updates, no public hearings, no consent agenda, no information or discussion items. So let's move on to the action items. City manager, if you would please read that. Approve interlocal agreement between Alpine Independent School District, AISD, and the city of Alpine for financial support of a child care facility. Okay, I need a motion. I need a second. Okay, so we're going to move on to discussion and let's start with city manager. Um, so this has been an ongoing topic, not only with our residents, with council, um, with other community leaders in regards to being able to provide adequate and the word affordable child care uh, services to the residents in our community. Um, Alpine ISD took the lead on this back in the summer working with the Workforce Commission 
to get several grants and donations to be able to initiate the process, get their uh, admin building outfitted to be able to even have a child daycare facility. Um, and of course, the toys and furniture and the things that are needed, as well as some of the staffing. Um, if you do remember, um, the university used to have a, a child care facility, and of course, they closed the doors on that. Um, the community center, which provided uh, child care services, closed their doors, um, some right before the pandemic and some during. As a result, there has been the outcry. We've heard it in our town hall meetings. We've heard it, you know, just amongst having conversations with residents. Um, so the Alpine Independent School District has been working with numerous entities, numerous um, organizations to try to find funding to make this sustainable and affordable. Um, I did ask Michelle some questions that I thought each of you may have, you know, for this discussion in regards to their budget, which was included in the packet. We'll notice that it, it is it's going to be hard to sustain this. Um, they currently have 12 or 15 with three more possibly enrolling. Um, they can hold up to about comfortably 50. Um, there is room for more, but then they would have to look at um, the requirements for staffing. Um, the number of employees, there's currently six. Um, fully staffed and capacity, there would be 12. Uh, the current rate is $40 a day. Um, that has been discussed amongst many people as far as is that really affordable, um, especially for not only our residents, but even for our employees. Um, they have worked with different organizations that have provided matching availabilities, specifically the Workforce Commission um, and a couple other entities that if they could get the donations, they would apply like for us, it's applying through the Workforce Commission, providing them, and then they would match it dollar for dollar. So our donation would be ideally tripled. And then they could take that money and they could apply it to another matching, and then it would basically be quadrupled. So our 25 could ultimately end up being 100000 Currently, there are several um, entities within our community who have greatly reached out and helped. Um, Big Bend Regional Medical Center, Brewster County, and Sol Ross. Um, and then, of course, they're requesting donations from the city of Alpine to assist with this. Um, Can you tell us how much each donated? Big Bend Regional Medical Center has donated 100000 Brewster County has donated 50000 and Sol Ross State University has donated 15000 to be matched by another group, yeah, an area, the Permian Basin Foundation. And so they would also match ours too, right? Um, we would be applying through the Texas, Texas Workforce, Workforce Grant, which is a, a copy of it is also in your packets um, that we would fill out and submit. What is the total amount that AISD is wanting to get? Um, I believe they're looking at trying to get about 250 plus thousand. Um, and then being able to match that to make it 500,000. And where are we on what exact is already Exact numbers, I don't have. But I do believe one of the representatives from the school district may have it. You have it. I do. Part couldn't be here tonight, so um, she's, she sent reinforcements. Yeah. Um, part of the initial discussion when this started was to look at the city sponsoring spots. Um, that we could utilize for our employees. Um, we would pay for so many spots and then our employees, upon surveying our employees, unfortunately we only had two who had interest and one who no longer um, does. So that route right now wouldn't be as feasible for us or beneficial to our employees. Um, I do suggest that the city look at this being a one-time donation um, until the city comes up with proper procedures on how you would like to move forward with providing not only other entities, but organizations future funding. Mm -hmm. um, so that one, we can get solar, our Alpine ISD off the ground and get them running for another year. But two, we can also have a better understanding of the long-term impact. Okay. All right. Would you like to come up sure. and speak? Okay. And just say your name and if sure. you're with AISD. My name is Chris Valenzuela. I'm the Alpine ISD CFO and fiscal agent for the Alpine Child Development Center. And so I started in July, and this is one of my, my first projects I worked on, and also in attendance is our director from the Child Care Center, Ms. Chelsea Craddock. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, so you got everything right. You kind of hit the nail on the head. 
Uh, one of the things I want to highlight is that child care is one of the things that this town is is kind of treats as a as a luxury rather than a necessity, and it's absolutely a necessity. Um, we, we've seen it. We've seen it come through our doors. Um, the daycare is really great. If you haven't seen it, I encourage you to come by and see it. You can come by anytime and we'll walk you through it. We've been working really hard to make it happen. And so one of the ways we did that is grant funding. And so we, sec we secured two grant funds that actually helped us to build it and sustain it for this first year. So we got off the ground, we got all the toys we needed, we got all the supplies, diapers, uh, the structure in the back, we got all kinds of things going on. But that is just kind of to keep us going and to get us started. Um, afterwards, we're gonna need some funding to keep going and continue to provide this service in the future. And so one of the things that we're hoping to do, and you hit the nail on the head, you said affordable. And so one of our goals is to actually, with this grant funding, to be able to drop our cost down from 40 to 20 or even below that. Um, so as you guys can see, I provided you guys a um, development center budget summary, and that kind of shows, you can see those red numbers right there at the bottom. Um, that kind of shows where we need to be in order to um, make this. And of course, this entire spreadsheet is stands any of this funding. So it just means that we don't get any extra donations or anything like that. That's what we're looking at. And so um, this 250,000 match to make 500,000 would really greatly allow us to do a lot more with this and make, make this work for our citizens. So the goal of ours is to be able to drop the cost down. So we started with 40, kind of just to make sure we had what we needed to get us going, but the goal is to bring it down. And so um, that being said, Dr. Reiner has been really working hard to make sure this is something that can sustain itself and continue on. And this is a goal for us to have this in the future. Um, I know I grew up and I went to the community center and so I, that was one of the things that was near and dear to my heart. And so being able to provide this daycare is really cool now to see it kind of something like that coming back to us. Because um, with Saras closing all these other things, it's been a necessity for the young parents of the world. And so we've seen some of our um, some of our students that have that are there now, their parents have been able to go back to work. And our principal, you know, brought his new little little baby as well. So it's really important to our, our people as well. Um, currently, the daycare is licensed, and so they have been licensed for about four months now. Is that right? And they're working towards a Rising Star certification on our license. Um, current amenities include five different rooms with appropriate furniture for each age group, ranging from six months up to three years. Uh, three years old, then they're eligible to go into the, the school system and start with their um, early childhood development program that they have as well, which that's not a requirement, just certainly something we encourage. Um, other things that they do have is a beautiful new fenced in structure, secured playground, carpeted turf, all the things you could have right behind the admin building, which you've seen come up. And that was all done locally as well, too. Um, they have a newly renovated state of the art security system, allowing our staff to monitor wireless access points to monitor and operate the door from their normal locations. Um, because you did highlight correctly, uh, we now have seven staff members. And so seven staff members over all the different rooms is kind of a lot to manage that door and stuff. So what they do is they have the ability to remotely take care of that and let people in and kind of like allows us to maximize our staffing that we have. Um, and then we also have an online childcare system that allows us to check in with parents, communicate, um, basically do all the billing online and kind of have everything in a one-stop shop where we can actually invoice and bill and take care of all that kind of stuff online, which is really nice. Parents can actually check in and see how their kid's doing, message our director, message the teacher. And that's just a few of the things we've been able to secure through the workforce grants just to get us going off the ground. Um, so going back to the budget, you guys can see that and look at that one. And I'll be, I can answer any questions you have along the way too. Um, currently, we have about 15 kids in our facility, or we could have three more enrolling in a few weeks. We anticipate a couple more children starting after Thanksgiving. Uh, we're currently at seven employees, and so after running the math, uh, when we get to the max capacity, we're looking at about 12 to 15 employees total, including our directors. And so that's kind of where our goal is when we have about 50 to 78 students. Um, our license allows for us to have 78 students, uh, but we're setting a comfortable cap at about 50 for our size, just to kind of keep us comfortable until we have a few years under our belt. Um, but I would love to see that number next out. I think it'd be a really a blessing to have that. Uh, currently, our rate is $40 a day, including meals from the AISC cafeteria staff. So we actually do get the meals catered from the lunch cafeteria that they for every day, breakfast and lunch. And that's included in the $40 a day. Something we are willing to do is we are willing to reserve spaces for stakeholders who have donated. So that includes your city employees, which means that we would have a set aside space for you guys. So no matter how big we got or how many people came in, you would have a set number of, of spaces. We're doing that for Saras and other people that have donated as well. And so the impact that your donation can have is huge. Um, with 250,000 is the goal to get from everybody, so matching to be 500. So if we're trying to garner this 250,000 together so we can have that full 500, currently we have 100,000 from Big Ben Regional Medical Center, 50,000 from Brewster County, and 15,000 from SRSU, which leaves us short about that 35,000. So, I'm sorry, 70, right? 
And so basically that 35 is what we're asking from the city as, as the highest number that we are looking for, uh, because what will happen is the Permian Basin Area Foundation will then match that 35,000 for us, and then the workforce will then match that 70. So your $35,000 donation could become 140,000 towards the future of this daycare. And you're absolutely right, this is a one-time donation we're looking for. And so the idea is that we would revisit, revisit this every year if we're looking at continuing this partnership. And so it would kind of come as a list of, you know, on, on the bills, it would say the rate is still $40 where we're offering a dis or like a like a reimbursement kind of to bring that rate down. That way, should we have not be able to do this again next year, we're not our clients aren't being blindsided by the double rate, it, but it wouldn't be double, it'd be bought back up if we were able to reduce our rate. So if you reduce your rate, it'd be to fifteen dollars per day. Uh, we're looking at twenty. If we can do fifteen, that would be great. Uh -huh. uh, but twenty is definitely feasible with this, depending on how much we are able to secure. And you are year round. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Year round. How many directors? Two. We have a director and an assistant. Okay. And we also have classroom leads and then assistant. Um, what are they called assistants? Yeah. So, and within the classrooms, they're in their own age group. So you have infants, you have one year olds, two year olds, and so we have leads in each one of the classrooms that also then can um, do that. So we don't have all the rooms currently open. So we don't have age groups in every room. Mm -hmm. So the only one we're lacking is the ones and twos. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So, okay. um, so yeah, basically, essentially, we're looking at, we're hoping to get 35 from you guys, but anything you guys are willing to give, we would be more than graciously accepting of that. And we really appreciate your support thus far. I know you guys have been uh, really vocal for us. And I see the, the nice things you guys say about the district and the, and the daycare and the paper. So I really do appreciate your continued support. and. We, we are happy to be able to provide the service to people not find, so. All right, stay there for just a minute. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Councilmember Rodriguez. Yes, Mr. Mansoda. On your expenditures, you list building lease and fiscal agent fee. Agent fee. Isn't the building, doesn't that belong to AISD? And isn't the fiscal agent, will that not, not be a member of the? Yes, ma'am. So, so why are you charging that off of the? So the reason we did that was because um, if you didn't know, we actually house what's called the 580 co-op in our building as well. And that's something that we've done to them is we actually charge them a lease for them to operate out of our building as well. It's just kind of a similar thing we do just to kind of offset costs of the electricity and things like that. Because with the building being the administration building, we don't really necessarily charge the daycare for utilities, things like that. That's kind of to help offset some of those costs to the district. And the fiscal agent fee is just to help us to provide um, stipends to the business office that spends a lot of time managing this grant. Uh, because as you guys know, uh, you guys have gotten, all, gotten a lot of grants. Mm -hmm. With grants comes a lot of reporting and a lot of responsibility to make sure that kind of stuff happens. And so you'll see 12000 there as a $1,000 a month uh, building lease. And then the fiscal agent fee is broken up over the year as well. Too. So it's basically electricity and water. Correct. And grant manager. Okay. Which is my, my office, which is uh, currently three people. You mentioned at the beginning of, of your talk that you all had enough money for the first year to get us so, going. Yes. Yeah. So, but we're also funding a lot of that ourselves. So payroll. Um, what's what's great about this first grant is it really just gave us the supplies and the construction materials to get going. And so we've been putting the bill for payroll and all the things that kind of go to actually make it run. So this is going to be able to get us to where that kind of offsets and everything is able to fund itself from there from there now. So we are, we are funding a lot of the bill currently for things like payroll and insurance and all things that, that exist because the current grants don't allow for us to have payroll expenditures. Okay, one more question on your mm -hmm. investment partner donation amount here. It states that the partner donation may also be used by the Texas Workforce Commission to draw down additional federal funds. Yes. So does that mean for anybody or is this money assured to be for the AISD health uh, Daycare. So my understanding, and I can have Dr. Reinhardt clarify this, and I'll reach out to you for sure. But uh, my understanding is that is this is going directly to our um, daycare. But what that entails is some works uh, workforce subsidies. So the workforce also does offer some programs to where they can actually offer subsidies to people that can't afford daycare. And now there's a long wait list for that. I don't think we have anybody currently getting subsidies, right? But I think that might be what that chart is referring okay. to. So that just kind of worried me that it doesn't. It states it can be used. So it basically. Or else, anywhere that they see fit. Right, and I think that might be them pulling grant funds to bring to us either way. But I, on my understanding is that all that would come directly to us. Everything that that is in this two hundred fifty that they match would come directly to us. But I can have Dr. Ryan follow up with you if you'd like. Well, it's just a, I would kind of like to know that beforehand, and you you, <laughs> you can't. Uh, right. Okay. But that's so my understanding completely. But. The MOU, um, it's a very simple MOU that I put together. Um, Dr. Reiner hasn't finished reviewing it, but it was it's specifically specifies that the funds have to go to the child care district. 
That's what I thought. And I didn't, I didn't want to say that without being 100% true because I had, hadn't finished, uh, seen the revised MOU yet. And I know that's where AISD will send it. It's just the way that this was worded. It kind of got me to thinking that, okay, it, it makes it sound like Texas Workforce Commission. Anyone can use it for Well, the Texas Workforce Commission can use it anywhere. Okay. Councilmember Nance. <clears throat> I had a couple questions too. Sure. Um, so it looks like y'all are at 180,000 right now and trying to hit 250. Yes, sir. So that means we're 70,000 short on that. And so you're looking for 25? Actually, 35. 35. 35. I'm going to interrupt because yeah. you signed a conflict of interest. Oh, so I, so I can't even discuss it. Oh, but we allowed Councilmember Rodriguez to no, discuss no, 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 We didn't. Okay, that's fine. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Okay, that's fine. All right, council members Sandate. And what are the ages? Infant through four? Six eight. months up to three years. Three years. Yes, that's correct. Three years. Six weeks up to three years. I'm sorry. I know oh, it was six, six weeks. Six weeks. Six yes. Weeks. We have some very tiny babies in there. So six weeks. Ah. And that's actually the bulk of our, our current enrollment is young children, like babies. We just got a, a what, seven week old? Something like that. They're born in August. Yeah. So we have some very, very young children in there. So. Very cool. And you can hear them if you come in the office in place. Councilmember Steven. And talk a little bit about what I'm going to call the market demand curve. Sure. Because uh, I'm out and about town. I've heard people say, not going to use it, can't afford it. Understand you're trying to bring price down. And, and so it's this balance between demand, which is the number of potential versus the price point at which they're willing to say, show up. Share a little bit about that if you can, because you know, 900 bucks, people are saying, not gonna touch the 10 foot ball. Yes, sir. I've actually been told that several times myself. That I yeah. hear all the time that $40 is a lot. Yeah. And respectfully, I, I agree, it is, it is quite a bit. Uh, kind of being what um, Dr. Reinhardt discovered to be kind of what, what people are kind of charging here around in the area already. So we're right around about 35 to 40 is what the standard is in this town that people are already paying. And that's where we established just to get us going with the goal to bring it down eventually. Uh, because we knew that it was going to be quite an undertaking to start a daycare right away. city is currently offering things and to hope to bring it down after that. So do you have any numbers at the $40 a day, what the demand is versus a $20 a day, what that demand would look I like? I don't quite have demand, uh, but I did attach that, that document that shows you kind of where we're at. Um, and the thing that we, we pulled a lot of people, I know Dr. Reinhardt did do a big poll before this all started, do you remember that? Um, I don't have those numbers with me, to be honest with you, um, but I know that she was looking at interest, and that's what kind of piqued us uh, going after this in the first place, is that there was interest in about 35 people. So we had about 35 people interested in our services oh, at the $40 okay. range. At the $40 range in your, how many do you say right now? About 15. About 15. And that my sense is people will express interest whether they sign up or not. That's another story. Correct. So that seems reasonable. Getting things going is certainly where you're trying to go right now. Sustainability for the long-term plan is where the challenge is going to be. Yes. As you all know, that's why daycares come up and they go down. Uh, and we start having led human resources, the Boeing company, 175,000 employees, we had a number of daycares. It was no longer sustainable. Uh, and it was on the open market. What's, so you, you get up and running this year, what happens next year? Because you're certainly not going to get the grant funding you're getting this year. And, and that's why I asked the demand curve. If you get it down to $20 uh, a day, which sounds like you're going to get there or close to it, I'm concerned about next year when the grants aren't there. What's your thinking in that area? So the grants that we have in place right now were solely grants used to build up the structure and get everything we needed to get off the ground. And so the grants that we're applying for and this matching grant that we're getting is what we're going to use to handle operating costs. So once we have you know finished all of these grants to build everything, the goal is then to use the funds from revenue and everything to then be able to fund the running costs. Because the, the key is getting started and then running at the same time are two very expensive things that happen at yeah. once. And so once this one's done, it should be a lot easier for us to continue with the process going. Those those overhead costs won't be there anymore. The cost of getting the administration building in order, of hiring people on, getting the, the security cameras and getting the licenses and all those things that go with getting it started won't be there anymore, but also this grant won't be there either. And so we're simply seeking out um, funds to continue to be able to operate. So next year, Correct. 
one should not expect you all to come back and say, oh, by the way, you did last year. Thank you very much. Can you do it again? Actually, so that is something we're looking at. We're visiting this on a one-year basis. And so, you know, of course, we won't expect you guys to do anything next year, but the potential would be to come back and ask again for this kind of thing to continue. It's not an automatically renewable grant, but it's something we can apply for every year. And so that is, that is kind of a, of a goal and why we kind of talk about this as a partnership rather than a donation. We've heard Dr. Ryan use the words partnership often, and that's kind of why. Um, that's coming for, but it's definitely not a requirement or an obligation by by any means. No, I understand way. from a contractual standpoint. I'm just trying to understand the thinking that goes with that. Yes, it goes back to my demand price point. Um, right. Knowing the community reasonably well, it's interesting. There are certainly daycare capabilities that people want to provide. You're one of them. Saul Ross used to. Others have. There are many get taken care of by grandparents. Right. You know, which is part of from a cultural perspective of what goes on in West Texas. And so I'm just that's why I go back. I think one of the things you really want to look your, look at is uh, this demand curve and understanding where your price points and breaks are uh, from a long term sustainability. So that's the concern. And I that have. kind of allows us to evaluate it too by doing it on yeah. a year to year basis. We can go in and see. We get you there. Yeah. Um, yeah, and if, if it doesn't work, then of course you know we revisit and see what what can change. Yeah. And that's 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 one of the things that I like about doing it this way is we have a little more security. Yeah. Uh, you're not, you know, into a two year or three year contract only to find that, oh, the kids are coming, you know, that kind of thing. This yeah. allows us to kind of evaluate all along the way. Yeah. Much like you do with your city taxes and everything else. But thank, you. thank you. You answer my questions. Yes, sir. On the 165 that you already have pledged, do you not, if that triples to you, are you not close to your 500,000 anyway? We are, we're pretty close. We're just short that, that uh, 70. So, uh, but should, so that's, the, you have different scenarios that you see here. Um, we've done a lot of studies and kind of crunched some numbers on it. And you'll see that we've done 15, 20, 50. Well, and so, you know, we are prepared to not be able to go all the way down to 20 if we don't, aren't able to secure the funds to do so, but we plan on reducing ways that we can. So maybe the first year, if we don't get the full 500, we just go down to 30 or we go down to 25 instead. Uh, we run some models that kind of show that there is ways around it, but reaching that goal of 20 or even 15 is, is ultimately what the 500 is going to get us Do you all take the child, co child care vouchers? I don't know that we do take child care vouchers. I know the only one that I'm for sure that we offer is the subsidies that come from the workforce. And so I, I child care vouchers from... From anything, like even, even that one too. Even right. We have those. Um, like those are something that we get, but those are kind of pretty difficult to get. Uh, I'm sure that if a company, you know, if say bigger telephone is offering to pay for some other people, that would be kind of like a voucher. Is that what you mean? We would definitely yeah, but take Texas that. workforce, the ones that they give out, y'all y'all don't take those. The workforce has the, the subsidies. I think we're on the same page. I think those are the ones that you're talking about. They either before they could even start taking or consider subsidies. So they're about a so so you're out. So you're not there yet. Can, they're yes. what? I'm sorry. They're about a year out before they can actually start running that whole program. And then it has they have to go through a whole process to be approved and they have yes. to apply it. It's kind of one process to get a subsidy. But will so y'all be going for that? We will take that, yeah. I mean, I mean uh, you'll be you'll be trying to work to get yourself certified. Yes, ma'am. So they're currently licensed, but they have to be a rising star certifier to get the subsidies, from my understanding. And so that's so the population that we have, I think there's a, quite a bit of people that use those funds. Yeah. Correct. I wouldn't couldn't tell you how many people actually have to because they have to apply for it. So there are there's not really any data for us that's readily available on that. Uh, because they can't apply for yet because it's not quite available. But pending availability, we will take those. You expect to be Rising Star certified when? The timeline for that is about six months. Is that right? We have to have our license for a full year before we can even apply the Texas Rangers. And the license was made available to you all in September, correct? August. August. So fully licensed as of August. And so as of next August, they'll be eligible for the Rising Star, which at that point you'll be eligible for the subsidies, right? I think it's a wonderful idea, but I'm just kind of with Councillor Stevens, um, kind of worried about what, what's going to happen the following year. I don't know if the city is ready to be or has the funds to be able to fund, you know, every year. Right. Uh, as you know, the city has a, quite a few big projects on our own that we're trying to take care of. That's just what worries me. Uh, and it kind of makes me wonder whether it was just jumped into without really taking a look at what was going to be happening a year down the road. That's valid. Um, you're, 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 you're making points that I hear you completely. Um, and that's part of the reason why this is only a year thing to allow us a little bit of leeway and to, you know, kind of take that leap and then figure out if it's something worth going back to next year. Um, so. 
So you're thinking your enrollment may increase if you're able to drop the rate? I anticipate that, yes, ma'am. I had a lot of um, people tell me in, in the community that, you know, it's just too expensive. I can't afford it. I would love to go there, um, but mm -hmm. I just can't afford it. Do you so, all stay open year round or do you follow the same uh, holiday schedule as the schools? They do not follow the same holiday as the school. They do stay open year round. And they actually are open much later um, than the school. So like schools shut down at 3.45. Uh, they work well until 5.36 p.m. to allow for that. And they open up at 7, 7.30 as well too. So. Council Member Stevens. So Megan, can you remind us where the money would come from? <laughs> <laughs> Megan's imaginary fund. No, you had something in the packet. Yeah, tell us what you um, had. So the and city... <laughs> I imagine you're fun. She is very transparent and been very open to the council. I have just not requested anything to be done with it. Um, the city does have a self-insured health insurance fund that we were required to have when we were self-insured. In 2020, the city moved off of the self-insurance, um, but the funds have all been stayed there. One, outstanding claims that could possibly come in. Um, two, we switched to an F fully funded with an HRA. So the HRA um, is actually paid for out of that account. Um, currently, that account has a little over $400,000 in it. Um, this isn't a, I now know we have money, we should use it for everything fund. Um, it is really been set aside for the future planning of our health insurance and that for the employees. This would be a one-time approval by council to move 25,000, that's what I recommended, um, into the general to cover this donation. But the fund really was intended for health insurance. Um, even though we are fully funded, we still cover an HRA program. You want to explain what that is, HRA? What does that stand for? Sure. Health reimbursement um, account. Yeah. And so the city actually puts $500 for every employee at the beginning of the year into their big old credit card. Um, and so as they use it, the money comes out of that account. We don't pay for it all up in advance. Um, it's just pulled out as the employees use it. So year to year, it could vary. We may use the full amount. We may not use the full amount. Um, it really is dependent on employees utilizing it. Um, we do have to pay a premium. So we pay a monthly um, basis account management fee to the task total. I just noticed task. I know it means something. Um, that they manage the account. So they go through the claims, the receipts, you know, they have an online portal. And the discussions has always been about employee benefits and looking at, you know, changing those and adding and making it bigger and better for our employees. This would be that one. So your tonight you would be if you approved it, the money would be transferred out to cover this specific. With that being said though, and our budget being what it is and the major projects that we have. This is not something that right now it looks like we could continue to fund. I personally would not recommend continuing to fund it under the health insurance fund. You've all talked about a nonprofit strategy and how you guys want to donate and stuff like that. You would really need to go down that route. You don't want to go back to bad fiscal traditions from the past. Just because there's money in the account doesn't mean you should spend. Exactly, that is that's what I was trying to say. I just I just want to know that want people to know that it's not an abundance of free money that we have. No, and with, um, that, and with everything that the city is needing to do, it's not something that looks like we could. At this to do. point, no. Like I said, this would be a one-time exception. the The thought process originally, like I said, was to sponsor spots. Um, but the idea of helping them get off the ground and continuing with the child care is something that we can use to entice not only our current employees, but also down the road future employees. Um, it really is hitting this on, on child care services here. And so I, I like the idea of helping them, but council would really need to, to look at sustainability for the city side to move forward with this type of donation or any other type of donation at that point. To anybody. A twenty five thousand would end up being a hundred thousand. Is there a possibility of lowering it? That is council's decision. And then you're requesting thirty five thousand, so it'd be at the highest fifty. Because a thirty five would make us whole at two fifty to five hundred. Okay, and I promise the original request was zero to forty. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> and I promised Councilmember Stokes I would read her 
because she can't be on Zoom since she's at this. So she said, I can't be there tonight as I'm attending my granddaughter's induction to the National Honor Society in Midland. However, I wanted to voice my approval for the funding for Alpine ISD daycare. Such a badly needed service to the community is finally here and I feel our added funding will help it continue to grow and flourish in Alpine. So if I was there, I would gladly make the motion to approve the interlocal agreement between the Alpine ISD, Alpine Independent School District and the city of Alpine for financial support of a child care facility. And I would vote yes when asked. Council member for Ward 1, Judy Stokes. The amount is really dependent on you guys. I, I averaged out what everyone was. <laughs> And we are grateful for whatever you guys choose to do and for even listening to us today. So I just want to thank you for your time. What do we have in that fund? A little over 400 but it is used for the HRA. Mm -hmm. And each employee gets $500 on their, their card. At the beginning of the year. And then it's prorated for new payers. And whatever's not used remains in that fund. Correct. They only pull out what's used. So it does fluctuate year to year. Are we money. getting some kind of interest on that fund? Is it in some kind of? Yes. Okay. But that money that stays there and is carried over is used to sustain that, that project the, the following year. So it... that what we have provided to employees has fluctuated. It was 750, then 500. It can go up and it can go down. That's a tremendous benefit. I haven't been anywhere where there's something like that. The most we had is it would come out of our own paycheck, that our own money, tax, which helped lower your possibly your tax bracket. And then it went onto a card, but it was money from you, not money from the employer. And so I, I do want to tell you there's a lot of added value to this program. Um, when we went to which program? To sure. the HR program. Okay. When we went fully funded, it changed our premiums, it changed our co-pays, it changed our deductibles. So this was an assistance to kind of make up for that difference from where we were at as partially self-funded to fully funded. And it's a program that the majority of our employees use. Right? Yes, they do. <laughs> That's why I have a problem with paying, I mean, playing with that fund. I mean, as everybody knows, we're not able to pay our employees what they're worth. We're having issues in trying to entice employees to come to Alpine. So these benefits that we're able to provide like that is what is going to get us the employees we need. That's why I said the recommendation is just for this year. Alpine. The amount is up to council. <clears throat> um, but but that is a fund that I, I don't I don't want every other agenda. Well let's move it out from there. Um, because it is the sustainability. And then right. our insurance, if we get hit with a high claim, our, our premiums will go up. And so right now we've averaged between five and eight percent increase over the past three years. Um, our brokers do an awesome job keeping it below 10%. Mm -hmm. That's very good, actually. Um, but we do have to take into consideration we do have, you know, an older population in our employee base, and we have young wild ones as well. Right. And so we don't know. We also have to consider that the child care would benefit the employees too. Having a child care like that is a tremendous benefit. It's what I had Kaylin in, and it was more than just a child care. It was like a pre-pre-school. She learned a lot of things being two and three years old that carried on when she went into pre-K and then on to school. And the other thing is, is our taxpayers. It would benefit our taxpayers because I do hear people. There's a family that lives in my neighborhood, the husband's DPS, and they cannot afford it. They cannot afford the child care center because it is $40 a day and they do have two children. So it's cost prohibitive. So I hear the same things out around and the residents do want to have a child care, I would like to see the numbers increase. We notice as it goes from 15 to 50, the deficit is less. So the more children that can be enticed to come, the more sustainable the daycare would be. So I think it is something that would benefit our residents, our taxpayers, and we need to seriously consider. But I do agree with you that it should be this year. And then council needs to decide on some kind of 
donation policy for nonprofits because we can't donate to everybody. We do, as Councilmember Rodriguez said, even though these funds wouldn't come from something that would affect our wastewater treatment plant or our streets, we do have these large projects that we need to take care of for our city that our residents also want and that obviously would benefit our residents too. So for my opinion, one time this year, I say 25 to 35, somewhere to bring it to where it needs to be so we can lower the rate and see if we can increase enrollment. We'll have that year to so see that. Okay. 25,000, I'd like to call for the question unless someone wants to modify it. Okay, so I have a call like, for the question. Do I have a second on that? I'd like to lower the amount to 20000 Okay, so you're moving to amend the original motion to lower the 20000 Do I have a second on that? Sorry. Okay, there is no second, so that amendment fails. Let's move back to the original motion. We have a motion on the table for 25000 Do I have a second for that? Second. Okay, any more discussion? Let's vote. Council member, City Secretary Council member Nance is abstaining due to conflict of interest. Let's call for the vote. All in favor, raise your right hand. Okay, uh, Secretary, we have on all council members who are present, Council member Rodriguez, Sindate, and Stevens who have voted to approve the motion to donate 25,000 to the Child Care Center for this year. Thank you all very much. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate Thank it. Thank you for so calling me. this meeting. Thank you all for all your support. And if you ever want to come by and see this, this, this center, come by. I definitely want to. So what do I do? Just come in and see Marsha? Yeah, just come and see Marsha. She'll set us up with the time and I'll come. Or do I like call her first and set up the time? Whatever you'd like. Either way works. Yeah. Okay. okay. That sounds great. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate it. Peace, please. Otherwise, we do. You have a fantastic <laughs> holiday. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and we adjourn at 6.13. <laughs>